Hey everyone, my name is Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel and take another second and hit that like button? I'd really appreciate it, okay? Thanks again for stopping by. What I wanna talk about today, I wanna to talk about my childhood and how did my childhood make me an alcoholic and how did it affect me in my recovery? And I never put the dots together until I was in recovery, but I think it's about time on this channel, an alcohol-free life channel, that I share some things with you that I can trace back to my early development years. And maybe you can, because a lot of this stuff that we feel and think in recovery, some of it is really not our, our doings, for lesser words. It really isn't. Did you know from zero to eight, that's when our emotional, our personality, the way we think about ourselves and the world around us, a lot of that development in those early, early years are time stamped in our memories. They really are in a self-conscious. The people who brought us up, mom and dad, they really had a lot to do with our development. And I just want to describe my life when I was just a little guy. So we'll say from as far back as I can remember, we'll say like five to about maybe 11 years old. Some of the traits that I developed as a child growing up in a dysfunctional home was my fight, fight and flight reaction was heightened all the time. And because of this, I always ran away from situations. It affected my relationships. I exaggerated situations when really nothing was going on because of my father being an active alcoholic in the home and my always hitting us, always beating us for no reason, or maybe for some reason sometimes, but a lot of the violence that happened to me as a child affected me. It had heightened my fight and flight reaction. So I brought that into my recovery. And let me tell you something. When I was a kid back in the 70s, it was fashionable to hit children. It really was. You know, you'd get a slap in the back of the head, they'd pull your ear, the principals were slapping your hands, kicking your ass. It was a violent situation. You know, you talk about nowadays not hitting children. I understand that. You shouldn't lay a finger on a child. You should not lay a finger on a child because that behavior damaged me. It really did. Another trait that I picked up in early life was my emotional regulation. I wasn't able to regulate my emotions properly. They were always exaggerated because again, being a little kid, my parents weren't there to teach me how to soothe myself. And one of the emotions that came out as a child, because I had to defend myself, believe it or not, physically defend myself against adults, not just my parents, not just my mom and dad, from the teachers, from neighbors, because for some reason, everybody liked to hit me. Maybe because I was a little bastard a little bit, maybe, maybe, maybe that was it. But you know, when you're only small, no one should be belting you around. So my response a lot of times was in rage. I, you know, I tell people, oh, they had, you know, I have an anger problem here in recovery. I'm like, an anger problem? That sounds really sexy. I had a rage issue. And if you have a rage issue, a lot of that rage is connected to your young, your young you, the little you. That's where it's connected. Like to me, it's little man, it's little Terry. That's where it's connected to. So I understand that, that that's where that came from. So I had to go back and talk about that and readdress those situations to learn from our early childhood. Because when we come into recovery and we're carrying all this emotional baggage, a lot of us may think it's us. Well, it is you in a sense, but it's not you who did it. It's the way you are brought up. It's in your development years. They are responsible. It's like, you know, wounded parents, you know, transferring their trauma onto their children, making wounded children. But I've learned over the years that you need to go back there and learn about your young self for you can teach yourself where it came from. Learn where it came from and do something about it. Because I'm telling you, when you have knowledge of your past, it is a lot easier to move forward and do something about it. 
It really, really is. Another one, I'm just reading here. Okay, another one that I had that was a big problem, and I know this came from early childhood because the teachers were pricks to me. The, my parents, you know, I see they call the police after me, believe it or not. The, the teachers, when I ran away from school because they were beating me up, they used to call the police on me. Imagine that, you're eight years old in a police station and they're telling you, if you don't go to school, you're gonna end up in jail. And the jail is right there, like the cell is right beside you. Imagine that doing to a little kid. Well, they did it to me. They did it to me and then they wonder why I had low self-esteem. They wonder why I had anger issues because the adults around me were nuts. They were all nuts. And, and I can say that because I was only little. I'm not responsible for my life, you know, when you're 10 years old or 11 years old. I'm not responsible. But they try and make me responsible for their crazy behavior, believe it or not. When I look back, they try and make me responsible for the way they treated me. And meanwhile, they're the adults. They're the six foot one people, and I'm the two and a half foot tall person. You know, so I'm not buying it. I don't buy that stuff. Another one that I learned as a young child is to do everything myself. Don't tell anybody anything. Survive it on your own. Learn the world on your own and do it all by yourself. That's why when I came into recovery years ago, it was very hard for me to reach out for help because I was so used to doing things by myself, keeping things in. I had trust issues. I had issues, shame issues from childhood from all that from childhood. And I carried that into my drinking. And let me tell you something, my behavior in drinking was off the charts. It was off the charts. So when I came into recovery and I went to counseling and I talked about the child within and I went back there and addressed those situations and, and connected the dots from my way I'm acting now to the way I was when I was a boy and the, and the coping mechanisms and the defense mechanisms I learned as a child, it's not very hard to see why I am the way I am. It's not, it's not too hard. Most of us, all 99.99% of us are not born mean. We are not born cruel. We are not born with low self-esteem. We are not born with hate or we're not born with that stuff. We come out pure, happy, joyful, and free. That's the way we come out. It's just the world and the people around us sometimes don't do a good job. Well, they do a piss poor job, to be honest with you. To be honest with you. Because when I recovered, when I come into re recovery, I thought the way I am was that I created it. I created the way I am. It was me. It was my personality. It was all the evil way I thought. It was the bad things I did that created me. Well, it is partially responsible, me. I am responsible. But a lot of those things I was carrying, like the over-exaggerated fight and flight response, the rage I was carrying, the thinking that I had to take on the world by myself, those kind of things. It was the coping mechanisms from childhood. Did they make me an alcoholic? I don't know, but I tell you one thing, it sure didn't help when it came to my drinking. It sure didn't help because there was such a void. There was such a spiritual, emotional, mental void that I had within me that it didn't take very much for alcohol to make me feel whole. Another one and the last one I wanna talk about is this sensitivity that I had. When I was a little child, all I did was cry. All I did was cry. I was so hurt. I was so upset, I was so afraid all the time, I cried all the time. I really did, I was so hurt and so, like nowhere to turn when I was a child. You know, they were abusive people. And me, I, I took a lot of hit for it. I really, really did. I was a troubled child, they used to call me, they used to say it was all my fault. But the thing is that I had a lot of, is I cried. I hurt easy, I was very sensitive. And for an alcoholic, that's a big trait. We are sensitive people. And I feel a lot of that comes from those days. Crying as a child was a protective mechanism for they would leave me alone. If I cried, they would feel sympathy for me, stop hitting me for, for lesser words. What a pathetic thing to say, right? But it was the truth. It was a way I, I protected myself from, from the adults. And I brought that in to my childhood.
I brought it into my, my recovery. I brought my childhood into my recovery. So if you're sitting there thinking that it's all your fault, it's not all your fault. It really isn't. But it's your responsibility to do something about it. For you don't carry those traits, those dysfunctional traits that were taught to you as a child, that you don't transfer them over to your children or you don't act them out. Because I'm gonna tell you something. These few things that I described to you don't do me any good as an adult. As a child, they did. Height and fight and, how, height and, fight and flight was a great mechanism for safety. It really was. Rage was another one. Because if I got crazy enough, they'd run away. But when you're an adult, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Did they make me an alcoholic? Uh, probably. I don't, I don't, I say they didn't help. There's a lot of people out there that had a really crummy childhood that are not alcoholics. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that had crummy childhoods that are alcoholics. They really are. And I carry that behavior in there and I wondered what the hell is wrong with me? Why can't I get recovery? Why can't I get a peace of mind? Why can't I live a normal life like everybody else is doing? And the reason was because I never had a proper counselor or proper therapist that could guide me through the child within experience and help to, to nurture and to start loving that child within, that child, that, that person within me that's crying out for help. Love me, help me, help me. And it was the same thing that I needed to, I needed therapy to, to nurture the child within for lesser words, okay? Am I the way I used to be? I am sure not. My life has changed 180 degrees. I am a lot better at coping. I am less angry. I don't rage out on people. I have a loving wife. There's a lot of great things that's happened to me in my recovery. But getting sober, putting, putting the plug on the jug was the number one thing that turned on the better life for me, that started me in the discovery of what is going on with Terry G and how can Terry G do things to help himself get better? And what can you do to help yourself get better? Because we all, we all know it's just taking the courage to do it. It's just taking the courage to do it, okay? I just wanted to share that with you. I just wanted to share that with you. Look at behind me, isn't that beautiful? I came out in the forest today for that very reason because I wanted to take a look at it and look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful it is out there, okay? It's like a winter wonderland here in Ottawa, Canada. It really is, you know, and I'm sober, I'm doing a video and it's a beautiful day out and I'm so grateful to be sober. I'm so grateful to be able to share this information with you out there. I'm so grateful. If you're hurting, if you're wondering what's going on, if you're not an alcoholic and you're, you're feeling you know, really upset as an adult, you might want to look back into your childhood, okay? You might want to take a look at it and go and talk about it because I'm telling you something, it's totally fixable. You can become better, you can become a better human being, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we're going to live sober one day at a time. If you can take a second, please subscribe, take another second and hit that like button. And just remember, freedom is sobriety, freedom is living sober. It really, really is. Ciao for now. God bless. See you next week. Bye-bye.